Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube video on my Hydrogen Alpha view of our sun. A series of uh, two missions that I'm putting together for people so that they can get out there and take images of the sun themselves. I'm not going to talk about my equipment too much because uh, I did that in a previous video, but uh, here it is with the uh, Daystar Quark Chromosphere in the center there and the monochrome camera on the end. So that's what I'm using to actually take my images and take the videos that I use. I'll talk about more about actually taking the images in another video, but this is all about what you actually see when you've got that sort of setup. So here's the uh, Quark assembly on there with the eyepiece in rather than the camera. And this is the scope I use, which is a 120 Evo style refractor. Again, I talk more about that in the previous video. So what do we see when we set that up and put the camera on? Well, this is what we see. We actually see it in red if we're using the eyepiece, but with the mono camera, of course, we're only seeing a black and white image. And this is what we'll typically see. This was taken a few days ago, and that is an active area. It's not an active region, an active region is a sunspot because we're actually at a solar minimum at the moment. So there aren't many sunspots on the sun. It's just started its new cycle. So hopefully over the next two or three years, it should get much more active and we should start to see more sunspots. But at the moment, there are very few sunspots on the surface of the sun. Of course, we're not looking at a solid surface. We're actually looking at gas. It's highly charged gas. It's stripped of its ions. So it's called a plasma. And we're seeing that surface and it's boiling all the time. It's moving around and it's doing all sorts of stuff. And we can see that over a period of time. If we look, here's a video of what we can actually see through the telescope with the setup. And you can see the active areas got dark and bright areas. The brighter areas are much brighter and hotter than the darker areas. And they follow field lines of magnetism on the surface of the sun because that's what causes sunspots now this active area could potentially develop into a sunspot but we're not sure so we're following that to see whether it does twist itself around and those magnetic field lines actually become strong enough to actually cool that surface down a little bit so that they become sunspots but it's not a sunspot or an active area at the moment or when the video was actually taken a couple of days ago and you can see those lines, they're like field lines of the magnetic field. And that plasma on the surface of the sun is following those magnetic field lines. If you remember the experiment where you may have done when you was at school, where you put a piece of paper over a magnet and then you drop iron filings onto the paper and you actually see the curving field lines around the magnet. And this plasma is showing you exactly the same in that active area. And when you get a really strong sunspot, a really, really nice sunspot, you actually see those really, really well, especially when you get a double spot because you get two spots really close together. One's a positive and one's a negative sunspot. And you can see the field lines between the two really, really nicely. Very much like uh, a bar magnet where you've got a North Pole and a South Pole. And if you drop those iron filings on top of the magnet, you see the field lines going around from the North and South Pole. And that's exactly the same with sunspots on the sun. So this is a typical view. We're not looking at a solid surface. It's actually a gas. It's a highly charged plasma with the electrons stripped off it. And because we don't see a solid surface, we actually see gas layers. And depending on which wavelength you look, you look at different layers. If you're looking in white light using uh, either a Barda solar film or a Herschel wedge, you actually see a surface that's actually much lower than this. It's a few thousand miles below the surface you're looking at in hydrogen alpha. So we're looking at a surface that is higher up than you would see in white light, and it's called the chromosphere or the color sphere. The light sphere is called the photosphere. And so we're looking at the chromosphere here and we can see the surface. And where there's disruption, you see a, quite a bit 
of detail, as you can see here. So we see the brighter areas, which are more active, and we see the darker areas. And sometimes they can be cooler areas where a sunspot forms, or in this particular case, this dark area here is actually plasma that's being forced up above the surface of the sun in a little bit of an arc following one of these magnetic fields. And because it's much darker than the rest of the sun, we actually see it as dark silhouetted against the chromosphere. Okay, so let's have a look at the sun in a little bit more detail. Let's see what it is. So if we move to the limb, we can actually see really faint towards the bottom here, something sticking out. And that is a prominence. So that is plasma that is forced up from the surface of the sun into the magnetic field and it's held there in the magnetic field. There's lots of activity going on because this plasma is constantly moving up and down within that magnetic field. And if you take a time lapse of that, you can see that really, really nicely. I'll do that as another YouTube video later. Because the sun's not the same brightness all the way across, because we're looking at a gas layer, if we look at the limb, if we look at the histogram here, you can see that it's nicely in the center of the histogram. But if we move towards the center of the sun, you can see that that histogram is moving. It's becoming much brighter. Because as you go towards the limb of the sun, you're looking through layers. It's absorbing some of the light. So the limb of the sun looks much darker than the center of the sun. So you have to be really careful when taking your images to get that right. And of course, the prominences that we showed you just now, hanging over the edge of the sun, are much, much fainter. So we have to change the camera controls. We have to increase the exposure. Sorry, we have to increase the exposure and increase the gain to make those visible in our image, as you can see here. And if we look in a bit more detail at what that gives us, you can see here. So there we are. So we're overexposing the chromosphere and we're actually seeing these prominences in much more detail. So you can see there's much more than you can see. This is the one we sort of could see originally. But you can see there's much, much fainter prominences visible in this particular moment in time. And if we move the scope a little bit over, you can see there's some really, really faint ones here. And this particular one actually goes all the way down to here, but you may not be able to see that on your screen. So these prominences are much, much fainter than the rest of the chromosphere. And of course, these are features that we can't see using a white light filter. You can only see these when you're using a hydrogen alpha filter. So the quark that I use is ideal to look at these. Despite the fact that the model I'm using is the chromosphere version, you can still see those prominences really, really nicely using the chromosphere version of the quark. So let's have a look at uh, a different part of the sun. And this is up towards the north where I knew there was uh, some other prominences visible. Oops, excuse me, while I uh, get the scope in the right direction. Here they are. So these are smaller prominences, not quite as big uh, or as detailed. But you can see the other side of the sun. You have to look around the edge of the sun, around the limb to find these uh, features at the moment. Because we haven't got many sunspots. There's not a lot of great. Um, detail visible on the surface of the sun or the surface of the chromosphere that we're viewing here but the prominences are continually changing so it's great to look out for those. If we change the uh, camera controls you can see a little bit more detail creeping back into the chromosphere but we're now starting to lose those prominences again they're getting much fainter. So when you're trying to image the limb of the chromosphere and the prominences as you can see things get quite challenging because of the range in brightness you have across the sun. The prominences are really faint, the chromosphere is really bright, but it's brighter the further into the sun that you get. And so depending on what your image, you're going to continually need to change the controls on your camera to get exactly what you want. So I'm going to travel around to another part of the sun now. And as we travel across, you can see there isn't really much detail on the sun. There's a bit of granulation there that you can see on the chromosphere, but I'm going to go down to another feature that I thought I'd uh, highlight for you, which is quite nice. It's a very small one, but it's uh, quite nice. And if you look down here, let's just get it centered in the uh, right position. Won't be a moment. 
just here you can see a bit of a shadow on the limb here now that is actually a prominence if we up the controls of the camera to increase the uh, exposure and again you can see that it's very faint so this prominence is actually originates here it's stretching out from the sun and out into space so you can see how much darker it is and it's actually silhouetted against the chromosphere here we go so you can see that dark shadow where it's absorbing the light of the chromosphere coming from underneath and then we're going to go back to the active area that we had a few days ago and then changing the uh, exposure and gain just so that that's reasonably well exposed and then hopefully this will develop into a really nice uh, sunspot but maybe not we'll see well i hope you've enjoyed my tour of the sun on this particular day and you can see exactly what the setup that i've got gives you and i'm sorry if the quality isn't quite as good as you can see it through the telescope or on the computer screen when it's actually live but these are the typical solar images that i'm able to take with this system so this is that same active area and you can see the active area here and you can see that dark area stretching away from it and you can see the prominence on the edge here so it is possible with one exposure to get both the prominence and the surface features in an image and i'll show you that in uh, my next video here's another shot taken of prominences towards the top these are taken a few hours before the images that you saw and you can see that this one was really loopy it had a real loop to it and of course if you look back at the video that i just showed you you can see that it's changed quite a bit and the video that i showed you was taken about an hour after this image was taken so you can see they change really quickly and then my next solar video is going to be all about how i capture my solar images so look out for that one and i'll show you exactly what i do to capture my images so i can get the chromosphere detail and the prominences just using a single shot okay so uh, look out for that one so subscribe to my youtube channel dave eagle hyphen star hyphen gazing and uh, i'll see you there and then of course if you want to know about image processing i've got some guides available from my website and i've got one on deep sky stacker to tell you all about stacking deep sky images and comet images i've also got my guide to image in the image in the moon and that's for dslr and webcam and then how to process astrophotography images using photoshop and then of course my latest uh, edition is how to process using affinity photo which if you're looking at this at the moment um in may 2020 they've actually got a really special offer it's 23.99 for the license you don't have to pay any other subscription charges 23.99 you get fully blown astrophotography image processing software well it's actually it's image processing software not just astrophotography but my guide tells you how to process astrophotography images using it and it's just as good as photoshop and a lot cheaper i hope you've enjoyed this guide i hope you join me on some of my other tuitions and uh, see you later